good morning good morning what a joy to see you wow many of you have come after the season christmas and new year you've come and you want to be in the house of god the first sunday what a joy to see you here today god bless you god bless you i'm going to be sharing a, a word and i i want us to just close our eyes and let's pray father today i want to commit this time to you I want to commit your servant to you lord who we pray for fresh anointing we pray that you bring the word alive to us we pray that you would speak to our hearts seal the word in our hearts oh god we give you worship in jesus name amen once again a very happy new year to you so happy to see you in the house of god and it's a brand new year you have a full year ahead of uh, each one of us uh, i know people make new year resolutions have you I heard one person say my new year resolution is to stop procrastinating. I'm not going to start until next month. You have a brand new year, the right at the beginning of the year we there's so much we can do. And I want to ask you what would you do significant this year? What would you accomplish? How many of you say I want to purchase a house this year? Let me see your hands. All right. All right. How many say, "Well, I want to make some significant financial investment." Okay. How many say, "I want to pursue a course of study, do a master's or a PhD?" All right. How many want to master a technical skill? Yes. How many say, "I want to travel to other countries this year?" Oh. Wow. How many say, "I want to be physically fit?" Ah. Well I understand this is January first week I I I completely get it How many say I want to make significant change to my behavior so I'll be a better husband a better wife Thank you Today is the first day of the rest of your life say that to your neighbor Today is the first day of the rest of your life Moses prayed in Psalm 90 teach us to number our days So that we may gain a heart of wisdom teach us to number our days so we may gain a heart of wisdom what a beautiful prayer lord let me know how much is left so i know how best i can use my time ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 and 16 from the english standard version look carefully then how you walk not as unwise but as wise making the best use of the time because the days are evil The New King James version reads redeeming the time because the days are evil. And I be says making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Apostle Paul is urging the believers to be wise and how how can we be wise? Number 1, we will make the best use of our time. Say this with me, making the best use of our time. We're going to redeem the time. We're going to make the most of every opportunity that comes our way. Did you know most people are either preparing for the future or repairing the past? They fail to enjoy their today. They fail to enjoy the time that God has given you today. I said this before, remember yesterday is past. It is history. Tomorrow is future. It's a mystery. But today is a gift that God has given you and that's why it is called present. You're a sum total of the decisions you made yesterday. Remember, today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. You can change your tomorrow by making the right decision today. So your today matters. Your 24 hours of every day matters. Make your 24 count. That's the title of my message. Make your 24 count. in 2024 So I want to share five things number one wise people understand the brevity of life they un- they understand the uncertainty the shortness the temporal nature of our life wise people know that we will not last forever there is a time our time ends and we will leave this planet our spirit go to their eternal reward Life is very short. Very very short. Psalm 90 says our days may come to 70 years 
or 80 if our strength endures, for they quickly pass and we fly away. 70 years or 80, that's it. That's very short compared to a lifetime in eternity. Most of us think that we will live up to 100. My grandfather lived to 101. My brother lived to 29. My mother lived to 64. Your life is shorter than you think. So let me ask you, if you're going to live to 70 years, if you are going to apply a heart to wisdom, Lord, teach us to number our days, it is really not talking about the number of days you have already spent. He's talking about the number of days you still have. Amen? You're not talking, oh, I lived 15,000 days. No, 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 no. How many more do you have? So if you're going to live to age 70, how many more years do you have? What will you do with those 10, 15, 20, 25 years? What would you do? What would you do that will be the best of your investment of your time? What would you do? Talking about the brevity of life, David so beautifully points out in Psalm 39, verse 4 and 5. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. That's it. James mentioned in James 4, 14, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. A mist that comes and goes. King David mentions Psalm 103, verse 15 and 16. As for man, his days are, are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it is gone and his place remembers it no more. How many of you remember people who died five years ago in this church? Do you remember the list of all of them who died? You know, there are those who have seen January 1st, 2023, did not make it to January 1st, 2024. Some of them have gone. And I have news. Some of us that think we'll be here to 101 years or 100 years may not see the end of this year. Somebody is sitting next. And, and the thing is this, we always think, as never going to be, it's, it's going to be my neighbor, you know. One of these four folks sitting to my left and right will not be there, but I will live to 100 years. Turn to your neighbor and say, no, I was not thinking about you like that. So the news is this, the brevity of life tells us it could be you. You could have few months more to live. The mistake we make is we live life as if it's going to be 100 and then suddenly find out that it's snuffed out and we were not prepared to go. Wise people understand the brevity of life. Your life is short. How short? Only God knows. Wise people understand the value of time. Time is a gift from God. Everyone has equal time. Talk about equal democracy. Everybody gets 24 hours a day. In each day, there are 24 hours. 1,440 days. 86,400 seconds. And every one of them is a precious gift from God. Time is something we feel we never have enough of, and yet we give it away so easily. Someone once said, time is free, but it's priceless. Time, you cannot own it, but you can use it. You cannot keep it, but you can spend it. Once you've lost it, you can never get it back. You cannot bring yesterday back to your life ever again. Time is constantly passing us by. It will never stop for anyone. It is fleeting. Time loss can never be regained. Listen, if you lose five lakh rupees, you can make it in the next few weeks' time. You lose five days of your life, you can never bring it back. Be careful. We are very careful with money, but we are very, very easy with, with time. You cannot control time, but you can manage it wisely. You cannot stop time, but you can make the best use of it today. Though time is limitless, remember your time has a limit. Your time has a limit. You have been given X amount of time to live on planet Earth. 
Job chapter 14 verse 5, one of my favorite scriptures. Man's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. I want to read that again. Man's days are determined. Read it with me. Man's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. Moses prayed, your days may come to 70 years or by his grace, 80 years, and soon we fly away. The key is this, what do you plan to do with the time God has given you? Some people use it on themselves. All the time they're just beautifying themselves or building up their body. Some people use it for the society. They do something that will do a betterment for the society. Helping the poor, helping the elderly, doing some charity. Some people use it for the devil. They do evil and wickedness all the time. Some people use it with God, for God. What you do with your time reveals your priority. It reveals what's in your heart. It reveals what you're passionate about. Some people use their entire life to build muscles. They're just pumping iron all the time. When you die, they just have to get a bigger casket for you to fit all those muscles. This extra iron, we just need a wider casket. Some people use all their time to raise their dog. Do you know some people will not come to church because they have a dog in the house? Yeah. You have to feed the dog. Some people will not come to church because the maid will come at that time. Some people live lives only for eating. From morning to night, they're thinking about where can you get biryani? Where can you get kebabs? Where can you get... You ask the name of the restaurant, they will run like people read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. I mean, like some godly people know the books of the Bible, they know the names of the restaurant, the back of their hand. I have some people tell me, Pastor, where you should go? They feel I'm not well fed. Some people use their time for pleasure. All they can think of is just having a great time, just going here and traveling and just having fun all the time. Some people use their time to get addicted. They give into drinking all the time or drugs or porn. They use their time for sex. You know, some people, all they can think of from morning to night is sex. They're addic addicts, addicted to it. Some people use their time creatively. They do something with their time. You need to plan to do what you will do with the time. You need to plan. Because if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. That's what Benjamin Franklin said. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Wise people not only know the brevity of life, they know the value of time, but not only do they know the value of time, wise people prioritize their time. They prioritize their time. How many of you know the story of the priority jar? You know the story of the... Okay, I see few people. Let me just explain. There was this professor of philosophy that came to the class and he brought a jar, a see-through jar. People could see through. And what he did was... He went under the table and brought some rocks and filled the jar with the rocks. And he asked the class, is the jar full? And everybody said, yes, it is full. Well, he went down, picked up some pebbles and he filled the jar. And the pebbles went to every area the rock did not cover. And now he asked the class, is the jar full? And they say, yes, sir, it is full. Well, he reached down, brought a small bag of sand and filled into. So areas that the pebbles left, the sand filled the jar. So he asked the people, his students, is the jar full? He says, yes, it is full. He reached down, got a couple of bottles of water, and he filled. And he asked them, is the jar full? Yes, it is. And he goes on to say, this jar represents your life. The rocks 
represent the major things, the most important things of your life, your family, your spouse, your health, your children, your spiritual life, your walk with God, all of that is your major stones. The pebbles represent your job, your house, your car. The sand represents everything else. Things that doesn't mean much. Like the plants in your balcony. And some of the stuff that are sand, you can do. The, the 15th pair of shoe that you have. Or the 50th pair of sandals, lady, you have. I mean, I mean those kinds of so sands. He said, the key is this. If you were to put sand first, then you could never fill the jar with the rocks and pebbles. The key is to prioritize what's important to you. Right at the beginning of the year, you need to prioritize What's important? You have to make a list and say, these are things that are core for me. Core for me. And you make quality time for that. The thing is, in life we get so busy with the mundane. We are busy, you know, with the dog and we are busy with the cycle and we are busy with the plants and busy with the flowers. And what happens is, we don't have time with our spouse with our children, for health. We don't have time with God. We don't have time for some of the major things in life. We're filling our life with sand most of the time. We're missing out on core things. So right at the beginning of the year, will you take time to prioritize your life? Put things in the right perspective. Make a list of things that are a priority for you so you don't miss out you don't come to the end and say, hey, I've wasted my life. I've wasted my life. Somebody also said, oh, by the way, the students in the end asked, sir, you mentioned the rocks are important things and the pebbles means the smaller things, the sand. What does the water mean? He said, hey, what it means is you can always find time for a cup of coffee with your friend. There's always time for a cup of coffee. Amen? Hyderabadi chai. Somebody also said that they tried this, but they also said what happens when you take care of the major things is somehow the sand gets left over and the sand gets piled up over a period of time. So another gentleman came up and said, listen, instead of just filling the whole jar, fill one portion of the jar with the rocks and then fill the same place with pebbles and sand and then have another layer of rocks and pebbles and sand, and another layer of rocks and pebbles and sand, that way the minor things doesn't get piled up and you are procrastinating on the smaller things in life. You need to find a balance. You need to find a balance. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. Stephen Covey. Wise people understand the brevity of life. Wise people understand the value of time. Why wise people prioritize their time. But wise people also will make their 24 count. That means they make every day, every 24 hour of their life, they will make it count. Let me ask you, have you come to the end of 2023 and you felt you wasted a lot of time? How many of you felt like that? Let me see your hands. You felt you wasted a lot of time in 2023. Or just be honest, that's okay. You wasted time. All right. You know, right in the first week of 2024, you can decide to stop that wastage. You can stop the leakage of time. If you can find out where your, you know, a bucket can lose water with a hole at the bottom or even if you were to trip it. Both ways the water will fall. Are you getting me? Even the small hole can keep dripping the water away. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if you are not conscious, you will keep dripping away your time before you realize the year is over and you're feeling sorry. How can you make your 24 count this year? Number one, make your 24 count physically. That means you plan to stay fit. 
plan to eat healthy plan to join a gym plan to join a gym heard the story of a man who wanted to start a gym business he borrowed equipment for the first month and he told the man he says in 3 weeks time i'll re- return all this equipment back because the new year resolution lasts for our 3 weeks and everybody who wanted to exercise get tired after 3 weeks but will you continue to the end of the year go ahead be fit some people decide to lose some weight not any difficulty pastor yunus has made it possible starting from tomorrow you'll get spiritually fit and physically fit amen make your 24 count spiritually you can decide right at the beginning of the year that you will have a spiritually strong life then you will develop your personal prayer time you will have a personal quiet time with god every day then you will determine to read through your entire bible many of you got certificates let me see your hands if you got a certificate may i ask you to stand everybody got a certificate stand 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 if you got a certificate stand wonderful give this folks a big round of applause Next year if I ask this question I hope the rest of you will stand as well. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Determine to read through your entire Bible in 2024. Determine to be in the house of God every Sunday morning. Please parents, people, young people listen. Be in the church every Sunday morning. Stop watching a service online. It is ungodly by the way. No. covid is over so it is godly to be here are you getting what i'm saying you wouldn't want to just watch the rapture online you want to be there physically present right when jesus comes to take his church don't say well i'll watch the rapture as the saints go up was all through i was watching the church listen be the church stop watching the church be inside in the house of god Somebody said this in fact JC Penney said that if a man's business requires so much of time that he cannot attend Sunday morning service then that man has more business than what God intended him to have I want to say that again if a man's business requires so much time that he doesn't have time to come to church then that man has more business than what God has intended for him to have listen don't make God guilty because he blessed you with a job is it is it because you're financially well to do that you feel right now you have to go to the club instead of coming to church or go watch a movie there are folks that will not come to church because the baby is crying but when they did not have baby every sunday morning they'll be in the church but now baby is crying bring the crying baby to the church amen and let the baby cry when pastor wilson is preaching we will lay hands listen friends if god blesses you be there it's your act of gratitude that you come to the church and say god you have given me two feet you've given me a good heart you've given me breath in my lungs you've given me life and i will be in the house just to express and say god i'm grateful for this life i come physically to say thank you I come physically to say thank you. You got a job, find a job that does not allow you to work on Sundays. Come here. If you do work on Sunday morning, be at Diamond Point in the evening. We have avenues for you to be in the house of God. Don't miss church a single Sunday. Don't miss church. That is one thing I'm grateful to my parents for. If I am sick on Sunday, he said go to church. Pastor will pray. you'll be fine no staying at home we did not find one authentic excuse to stay at home we were not allowed to i thank god for mean parents who did not give excuse for their kids we need some mean parents today that will be in the house of god if god is not a priority in your life or your children's life you're actually going down the hill you're going down the drain as it were 
make your 24 count financially. Plan to get out of debt. Let me ask you, are you in debt at the beginning of the year? You can choose to get out of debt. Plan not to overuse your credit card. I remember when I was young, this was way before I was married, I got myself a nice Citibank credit card and I, you know the pleasure of having a plastic card. I forgot how rupees looked like. The credit card and the joy of swiping, man, every nook and corner I could swipe. And the power it gave you. Yes, swipe. Everything was fine until the bill came at the end of the month. <laughs> I didn't know they kept a record of all the expenses. But they did. And it came way beyond how much I took home. Salary. And because I got into a vicious cycle of swiping the card all the time, every month my expenses were more than my income. I started my month with a debt every month. Until Pastor Stubbs came and he preached a message on how to have a plastic surgery. He said, you have to take your credit card and you take a scissor and you cut it into two. I did not go through a plastic surgery, but you know what I did? I kept my credit card home and I stopped using it. Started carrying some money. Well, you know what something? You use less money than you use when you pay through credit card. Did you know? It doesn't only happen to me. When I carry real double with me, I started spending lesser than I used to swipe the card. You know, once I kept the credit card home, I was able to manage my finances. Thankfully, by the time I got married, I was doing good. My wife has still been happy with me. Listen, some people are given to taking multiple credit cards. They live beyond their means. They're trying to catch up with their colleagues or neighbor or friend. I saw a, a reel on Instagram that says Warren Buffett lives in the same old house. He's a billionaire. He said, I can buy any house I want but I don't want it. I'm happy with the house I have. He drives a regular car and he drives. He can, he can afford a chauffeur, but he drives a car. Why? He said, listen, I'm fine. He goes to McDonald's, have a burger. I said, listen, what's wrong with you? He said, I'm fine. I can live a normal life. I don't have to impress anyone. I think you can, get, you can make your 24 count financially if you don't try to impress someone else. I also want to say this, honor the Lord with your finances. Give a tenth to the Lord. One tenth of your income, your salary, your business, your profits does not belong to you. That belongs to the Lord. You bring it to the house of God on Sunday morning. You bring to the storehouse, the book of Malachi says. Storehouse is where you are fed spiritually. This is a storehouse where you are fed. You go to some other church, you pay your tithe there. If you come to this church, you pay your tithe here. If you're eating in one restaurant, you don't pay the bill in some other restaurant. That is a crime. Amen? Plan to make wise financial decisions. Plan to make, plan to make some investment that is really healthy, good. Plan to make some investment towards a house. If you're in a rented house for a long time, plan to buy what this year? Can somebody say amen? Amen. Make your 24 count digitally. Oh, this is a difficult topic. I stepped on somebody's toes this morning. Are you addicted on social media or on Netflix? How many hours of 2023 were you on social media? Four, five, six, young people, seven, teenagers, nine, 10, 11, 12, how many hours? People, families, how many hours were you watching movies on Netflix? We have a generation of digital addicts. Be responsible with your digital content usage. You need to live, you need to be able to say, hey, I can live without this for a day. I will not be in ICU. I will still be breathing okay. 
even if I'm not on social media. Young people, did you know you can live normally without your social media for a day? Yeah, you can. Try. Try. We got so connected that we are in a web. We are all caught up in a web. The funny thing is, if you forget your Bible in the church, people don't come back searching for it. But you lose your mobile phone, you come back like you have lost eternity. You lost your salvation. And you come back. You may be near, far away, near the airport or somewhere. You'll drive all the way back, one, one and a half hour. I think they'll come back. Pastor, <laughs> my cell phone. We never had cell phones lost and found that was kept here for one month. Bibles are lying for months together now. Make your 24 count for your marriage and for your family. Plan for family time. Plan to improve your married life. Spend quality time with your husband, with your wife. Go for a dinner together. Your wife will be shocked if you call her out. She's, you've never called her in the last 20 years. Go for a trip together. Plan for holidays with the family. Plan to build memories. This year, this year, I want to encourage you. Please plan for a holiday with your family. Go somewhere. You can even make a trip overseas. Sometimes going overseas is cheaper than going to Shimla or going to Kashmir. Did you know that? Yeah. You can go to Singapore cheaper than going to Kashmir. You can go. Plan to go. You know, this past week, just a couple of days ago, my, uh, my second son, he went back to his college. He was here for three weeks. Johan was here. And I'll tell you, we, we met after six years for Christmas together. The last Christmas we had was 2017. We met now, six years later. It was precious. It was only three weeks. He's gone back. He's already reached his college. But I'll tell you, remember this. Your family will not always be with you. Your children will not always be with you. Your spouse will not always be with you. Your parents will not always be with you. Do things for them when they're around. Don't be so caught up with the sand that you forget the most important things in your life. Don't plan to say the best things at their memorial service. Tell them now. Tell them now. Make your 24 count personally. Personally, I encourage you to get right with God. Make sure right at the beginning of the year that you're really saved. Don't say, I'm a Christian home. I'm baptized 20 years ago. No, 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 no. Make sure you're walking with God every day. That you've given your heart to the Lord. A pastor was waiting in line at a petrol bunk, waiting to get the car tank filled up. And the attendant who was working there, he recognized the pastor. And there was a long line. It was a Christmas weekend, long line. People were trying to go out of station, drive far away. Finally, the attendant came to the pastor. Said, pastor, I'm so sorry. It seems like every, everybody waits to the last minute to get ready for a long trip. The pastor looked at the young man and says, I understand. It's the same thing in my business too. Even in, for spiritual people, you wait till you are old to get right with God. Thinking you'll be there at that age. We don't get right with God when we have the time and the opportunity. Don't let sin easily entangle you. I love the scripture in Revelation 2.21 in the King James. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. God gave Jezebel space to repent. God gives each one of us space to repent. He gives us time to repent. We need to get right with God. Personally, I want you to try your best to break the cycle of sin, of addiction, of a bad habit today. Decide to make a change Today. Don't come to the end of the year and say, oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm still a drunk. I'm still using foul language. Don't, don't do that. 
When I was a young man, I was a bit wild. I decided at that time, I said, I cannot live that life. I have to make a change. I made a decision not to do things that are bad. And I had a U-turn. You know how many people will cry before God and say, you're sorry? They'll shed crocodile tears. And the next day, they go back to sin again. God is not just interested in your sorry. God is interested in repentance. He's interested in the U-turn. Amen? God is interested in a U-turn. When Jesus came to Zacchaeus' house in Luke 19, he looked to Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, I want to come to your house. He came down and said, God says, Lord, if I've taken anything wrong from somebody, I'll give back four times. Whatever wrong I've done, I will change my life. I'm willing to repent. I will make a U-turn, oh God. And Jesus says, today salvation has come to this man. My friends, when you make true repentance, you're not crying. You're making a lifestyle change. Today, today you're listening to me and you have messed up 2023. I'm asking you right now, as a man of God, I'm asking you, don't live your life like that. Don't shed your tear. Don't say sorry. Come to God and say, God, I will change. I will change. I'll make a U-turn. I will not be using that filthy language. I will not be with those ugly friends, uh, bad friends. I will not be drinking. I will not be a loser. I will take responsibility for my life. I will do what is right. My father did that, and I didn't say this in the first service, 1974. My father was given to alcohol. But 1970, three of us, three kids, a captain came and shared the gospel with my father. And my father gave his heart to Jesus. It's almost 50 years he made a U-turn. He, he dropped alcohol. He dropped his habits. 1974, I've seen him before that. I've seen him since. He lives with me. He's still alive. He's 84. He's made a U-turn. The last 50 years, he has not had alcohol. He's walking as a man of God. My friend, your children don't need a drunk. They, didn't, they don't need a foul-mouthed father or mother. They don't need a porn addict. They need a man of God and a woman of God. You can decide to change today. Today can be the best day, can be the first day for the rest of your life. And you can say, with God's help, I will change I will make my 24 count. Plan to develop your leadership personally. Plan to disciple someone, especially in your family. Learn a new skill. Plan to read a few books. Plan to mend a broken relationship. Plan to be a better version of you. I'm going to call the worship team. Finally, wise people will be careful with time stealers. What steals your time? Where does time leak in your life? What are things that you spend hours that waste your life? Wise people will take a stock of their time. Wise people will make every effort to alter their priorities. So where is time wasted? I want you to imagine for yourself. Is it on Netflix, social media, on the internet, on porn sites, or with bad friends, with alcohol, with drugs? Where is it? Are you overworking at your office? Are you with friends all the time? As I conclude, I want to read Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. I want you to underline the scripture. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They will rest from their labor and their deeds will follow them. Can you all say this with me? Their deeds will follow them. What it means is whatever you have done in this earth will follow you into eternity. The Bible says even if you give a glass of water in my name, you will not miss the reward. If you call somebody raka, a fool, you have to give an account. Many times we live lives as if we are not accountable at all. 
We don't have to answer anybody. In fact, many married couples live their marriage as if they don't have to answer their father in law. But there is a God up in heaven we have to answer. I want you to live life conspicuously, carefully, with a sense of responsibility, with accountability. Their deeds will follow them. Just imagine that I come to your room, and let's say I come to Pastor Milton's room in heaven, and he's already there, and I am visiting. I say, Pastor, I want to see all the deeds that followed you. Let's play the tape recorder one more time. Let's play the videotape. It'll be very interesting to watch. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I didn't say that. The Bible says your deeds will follow you. All the vocabulary you said will follow you. All the good things you said and the good things you've done will follow you. All the good you have done will follow you. All the good, bad and ugly, everything will follow you up there. What kind of a recording will you have up in heaven? You know, there is a God up in heaven. Every word you speak is eternal. Did you know that? Once a word comes from your mouth, is recorded. God up in heaven keeps a record. We have to live carefully our life. We cannot live the way we want to. Dr. Alfred Nobel was a Swedish chemist, engineer, inventor, businessman, and philanthropist. He was the man who invented the dynamite. One day, his brother Ludwig died in France from a heart attack. The French newspaper mistook the death of Ludwig to be Alfred's, and he published an obituary that read, The Merchant of Death is Dead, because he was the inventor of dynamite. Dr. Alfred, who read his own obituary in the paper, he was shocked. He said, you know what? I'm never going to be known as a merchant of death. I do not want the world to know me as a man who invented a device to kill people. I'm going to change that. He came up and the millions of uh, money that he had, uh, currency he had, he invested in the Nobel Peace Prize. Today, if you read about Alfred Nobel, you only can think of the man who is behind the Nobel Peace Prize. My friend, today you can make a decision to change your life. You don't need to be known as a merchant of death. You can say from today, I will change my life. Moses prayed, teach us to number our days so we may gain a heart of wisdom. What a wonderful prayer. I want you to close your eyes. Will you make that prayer? Say, God, teach me to number my days so I may gain a heart of wisdom. Lord, from today, I will change. I will be a better person. I will be a better husband, a better wife. I'll be a better son, a better parent. I'll be a better believer. I'll be a better employee, a better neighbor. I will make decision to change my today. I want you to make changes for that today. Today, I will not sin. Today, I will not use the bad word. Today, I will not drink. Today, I will not get onto the wrong website. Today, I will not be harsh with my spouse. Today, I'm going to be a godly man. Tomorrow morning, when you wake up, say that again. Make your 24 count every day. If you're going to make a decision to say, I will change. God spoke to me, I will change. I want you to lift your hand. I will make a change from today. Lift your hand. Lift your hand real high and say, I will make a change in my life from today. I will change. With God's help, I will. I will be a better version of me. I will make my 24 count. Will you pray this after me? And everyone here, let's pray together. Father God, Father God teach me to number my days teach me to number so I may apply wisdom so I may walk carefully. I will walk responsibly. I will live my life with a sense of accountability. Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you. I want to walk with you. I want to read your word. 
I want to pray. I want to be a better version of me. Wash me of every sin. Help me to have a brand new start. From today, the 7th of January 2024, I will make every 24 count. Help me to live for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name.